I'm going to ask if I can take my jacket off. It's so warm. Yes. I'm, I'm dying uh, from, uh, from the heat. Do you guys want me to speak in Armenian or English? I can do either one. English. 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 Okay, we'll do English. Uh, first of all, as a full disclosure, you know, whatever I say is my opinion, so I'll, I will not hold you or uh, the Virginia school will be responsible. Uh, if you guys, you already get my background. I've been doing healthcare or hospital management or medical management over the last 30 years. I also serve on a couple of very important committees. Uh, one of them is the California Hospital Association, where I'm on the board, as well as the Executive Committee of the California Hospital Association Board. Uh, I also serve on various uh, boards, um, American Hospital Association, as well as some of the regional ones. So I have pretty much, I think, a good understanding of hospitals and hospital system and based on my 30 years experience. Can you hold it? Speak yeah, you want me to hold it? Yeah. yeah please. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay, much better. Uh, I visited Armenia as, as a visitor. You know, I was not planning on going and visiting hospitals or clinics or doctor's offices. I visited based on the Prime Minister's invitation. And I met the Prime Minister. I also met various hospital executives, as well as various uh, uh, government officials. And I wanted to go myself to various hospitals, clinics, and doctor's offices and see it with my own eyes. Because I don't want somebody to tell me, oh, this is what it is, this is what it is. So a lot of this thing are my observations of when I visited these hospitals and when I visited these clinics, doctor's offices, uh, the ministry. And, and various aspects of healthcare. So let me give you some basic information, at least gives you a framework where we're, we're, we're discussing. Okay. Just overall, I think you have to understand that because we live in the United States, just have an idea how much healthcare costs in, in the United States. Uh, and look at this. Our, our healthcare expenditures, everything, right? Everything in doctors, uh, hospitals, insurance, everything is, it is pretty much approaching 20% of our gross national product. A staggering number, 20%. It, and it's about $9,024 per person for every person in the United States. We have 320 million people. For each person, that cost is 9024 And I also I listed some other countries. Italy is the lowest one because they have national healthcare system, 3,200. Uh, Switzerland, for some reason, is 6,787. I don't know why. Switzerland has very high uh, healthcare expenditures. Uh, now, so that gives you a flavor of what the United States is, which is we have the highest expenditures, and the rest of European countries. Now, we're going to give you now Armenia. Armenia spends something like 1.9, less than 2% of his uh, GDP in healthcare. Does it give you an idea? How much, I mean, they, they don't spend much. That's basically what it is. Hardly anything. I mean, not even close to any European countries. Their healthcare is, you know, pretty much uh, third world countries. I mean, you go to Bangladesh, probably they spend more than, than Armenia. So just to give you that, that frame, it's uh, roughly 2%. Okay. Uh, some basic statistics. We say Armenia has about 3 million population, or 2.9, right? So the, the population, it's, people tell me that's not even a good number. It's much less than that. Maybe another million less. Because another million is in Russia or surrounding countries. They come and go. Real population is maybe 2 million. So that gives you some, some basic statistics to take care of the healthcare needs of 2 million people. And Armenia is about... 42 hospitals, I count. I get the list and we count every one of them. And we at Prime, we have 46 hospitals, right? We have more than what Armenia has as a total in, in aggregate. So that, that gives you some idea there. Uh, okay, uh, just some statistics, basically male and females and premature deaths, because that's basically, it boils down to what Armenia's basic healthcare problem is. And that's, you have to understand that. Before we go into hospitals, doctors, 
clinics and everything else. The country itself has a basic fundamental healthcare problem which is, needs to be addressed. And I told this very specifically to Pashinyan. I told this to the health minister. I explained to him, these are some of the basic things Armenia needs to do. Number one, smoking. Over half the population smokes. I don't know, you visit Armenia, you see. Wherever you go, everybody smokes, everybody smokes. I'm not trying to put them down, I'm just, that's my observation. So that is a major healthcare problem, that's one. Number two, drinking or excessive drinking, I should say. Everybody drinks, but that's something needs to be done. Educate the public, which the health minister said he's gonna do some basic steps to prevent or reduce the, the constant consumption of alcohol. Number three, pollution. It's a big problem in Armenia, in Yerevan. Every car is, somebody's doing something to the car. It's bad. It smells bad, it's bad for your lungs. I mean, my chest was hurting. I mean, when I was there in Yerevan, my chest was hurting because of this tremendous pollution from basically the cars, emission from the cars. And they're using this cheap gas or whatever, benzene, whatever they say, that, that needs to be addressed. So these are the three basic healthcare needs that the country has that needs to be addressed as, as a country. As, as a nation, and it's, it's a problem that we need to, we are facing, we need to get rid of that. Okay, uh, let's see, what is this, behavior therapy and so forth. Uh, you know, this is, gives you some idea about the population and the percentages, maybe it's too technical. Okay, uh, let's see, again, a comparison between Armenia and US. If you live in this country, you're a citizen, at 65, you get immediately Medicare, so you're covered. Your healthcare needs are covered pretty much after 65. Now, if you're poor, and there's a standard how much money you earn, let's say, state by state is different. So you're eligible to get Medicaid. In this state is Medi-Cal. You can get Medi-Cal. That gives you the basic coverage you need. See the doctor, get you know pharmacy prescription, hospitalization, and so forth. The third option is you work for someone. You put a company, that company provides you with some healthcare benefits through a PPO or maybe a different types of uh, EPOs, employer plans, so you cover. Uh, clearly, lately the managed care system is coming and some of you, I'm sure you have some managed care plans, which is a little bit different than the traditional insurance that gives you coverage. Or you can buy individual insurance, which is very expensive. You know, buy a, you go to Blue Cross, say, hey, sell me insurance, it's probably $2,000 per month that they're going to charge you. And the latest thing, the exchanges. In California, it's California uh, plan that the state is administering it. Now, Trump is trying to get rid of it because that was an Obama plan. Gives you these exchanges. And in the state, we have close to one and a half million people under that plan. Before this thing implemented, we have about roughly 4 million people who are uninsured in the state. So we have 40 million people, about four, maybe 10% of it was uninsured. Under Obamacare or the changes, we got rid of most of that uninsured. The people that are uninsured nowadays are probably illegal aliens, have no documentation and so forth. So they're trying to change it. But those are the people that are uninsured. Uh, our system, give you some idea, most of the hospitals now going into the systems, and uh, you got the, the nonprofits, you got the for profits, the academic centers, UCLA's, and so forth, state, military, and so forth. Insurance models, you know, we, we discussed that. Uh, various uh, plans that we have. Armenian hospital standards, okay, that's important that to discuss. This is something I had a lot of discussions with many hospital executives and the policy makers. What to do about the healthcare system in Armenia? How we can change that? Because as I said, the basic system, with the exception of maybe four hospitals, three, well, I'm giving the benefit to Miriam too. So with these four hospitals that have the basic stuff, 
that have the equipment, that have the supplies. So the stuff that we take it for granted here, the rest of the hospital don't have it. Just don't think in the United States. I mean, if you go to any hospitals, you know, most of them don't use gloves. It's basic stuff. They don't have gloves. You know. They have, uh, and, and, and when I went to uh, some of the, they call it marzers, the areas outside Yerevan. When you go to these marzers, outlying areas, I guess the English word. When you go to these outlying areas, some of the basic supplies lacking. They don't have it. They're asking, saying, well, can you send me gloves? Can you send me, uh, you know, alcohol? Can you send me this? Sutures. I mean, stuff that we take it for granted in any American hospital. None of it exists. So we need to get that, at least to have these supplies, at least to have the necessary equipment that they can function. That's one. Second, we need to some standards to improve the system there. You need some of the basic stuff that we as American hospitals, and I've been doing this for 30 years, running hospitals, managing hospitals, managing all this thing, we take for granted. But I never seen anything like that in my 30 year career. Number one, start putting very specific standards. And I told that to the Prime Minister, I said, either you need to bring Joint Commission International, because there's a Joint Commission International. There's one in the United States, obviously, that's the biggest. 90% of hospitals are Joint Commission. There's Joint Commission International, which serves a lot of the hospitals in the Gulf. And they all have it. If you go to Dubai, Abu Dhabi, or Qatar, any of these hospitals, they're all American standards. They all use Joint Commission International. So I told the Prime Minister, I said, we need to have Joint Commission International. In the absence, DMV, which is a, the European equivalent of Joint Commission. So you will have that, and you'll bring immediate recognition that Armenia is trying to get to the European level. Bring that standard. So that, that's first. And I said, the second step is the process. First, you have to decide as a country, as a health ministry, as a policy, you're going to have that. That's one thing, right? Put that in place. Second, start the process. I told them it's going to take you three years. I think it's going to take them five years, quite frankly, because they're that much behind. I mean, I was shocked. I'm not making this thing up. I went to this hospital. What was the hospital's name? No, not the other Mikalian, right? Was it, no, Mikalian was Mikhail, what, one of the hospitals. We'll see the and I'm not making this thing up, okay? I have a picture. The hospital room, and each room is like that. It was built by the Soviet time. This small entrance to the room, patient room. If you go inside, there's this big bed. The patient is lying on the bed. Uh, and I have the hospital CEO, I have the doctor, and somebody from the ministry, I think, was with us. And I said to the doctor, doctor, how do you get this patient out to any x-ray, surgery, or anything that the patient needs to go? And, and he said to me, we take the bed like this, we take the bed like that out. I said, are you kidding? What's going to happen to the patient? going to fall. So the patient has to walk. The patient can't walk. He's just barely surviving. See, I'm saying it anecdotally, but I'm trying to make a point that most of their hospitals, the way they build it, is wrong. So imagine the infrastructure that needs to happen in order to bring these 38 hospitals, because we said 42, right? Four of them are good. He said three, but let, let me give the benefit. Let's say four of them are good. 38 of them needs to be changed. And that starts with the basic structure. So basic is lacking. We don't have the basic stuff that you can't even move patients around. You're going to take them to x-ray, to the lab, to surgery. Which is a basic thing in hospital. We do it every time, all day. The patient has to move. You can't move them. The patient has to walk. Imagine an 80 year old person is going to walk and can barely lay in bed. So that's lacking, except these four hospitals that we said, 38 hospitals, most of them are need that thing. Okay, so you start the process of standard accreditation. Second step put organizational structure. There's no organization structure. You have the chef, they call him chef, Chef John. So that's the guy in charge, that's the doctor in charge. And uh, you got the doctors walking around, nurses walking around, I have no idea what the hell they're doing. I mean, they're just walking around. So you need to have some basic structure how to organize a hospital. 
Because hospital is a big organization. Imagine, each hospital in the United States, 2,000, 5,000, you go to UCLA or Cedars, 10,000 employees. It's a structure. You need to have structure. Yeah, I know Army is much smaller, but you need the same principle. That's what I'm trying to advocate, that Armenia should have the basic principle of having that structure in place. And after that, start implementing them, putting those standards in, in Joint Commission as well as or DMV. I think DMV will be better for Armenia because they're not there. They're not even close. DMV is a little bit easier to accomplish, <coughs> and I have both. In some of our hospitals, that we have DMV. Much easier to deal with them. Much easier standards. They're lenient a little bit. So it gives Army a chance to get to that step. The health minister understands it. I think the guy, Arsene, knows. Yeah, Arsene knows. I think he gets it. I explained to him, he said, yeah, that's what we need to do, my job. I mean, he really gets it. He understands that's what was needed in Armenia. And he started already. Right after we came, he started a campaign against smoking. That's why I told him, I said, you got to stop this. Unbelievable. I said, I can't even go to a restaurant. Every place I go, there's smoke in my face. But I can't eat anything. That's what I told him. And whatever I go is meat, meat, meat. You have to tell them, enough this meat crap. You know, it's like, give me fish maybe once in a while. And they bought me fish from Arak's liver. So just say, okay, my child, we'll bring you a fish. So just, again, I'm trying to make a point by being, not trying to be funny, reality, which is sad, but also the mindset needs to change in a country that's never been changed. It's been like this forever, I guess. Uh, okay, the other thing, they keep the patient forever in bed. That's another thing, which is, I said, has to be based on evidence. Okay, you kept the patient, brought the patient there for a reason, right? Surgery or um, pneumonia or whatever, right? In the United States, we have a very specific standards. We kept the patient for pneumonia, we give you four days. We kept the patient for a surgery, two days. We kept the patient for heart attack, uh, if the patient doesn't die, uh, 1.5 days, two days. You have to get them up. So that's what we do. That's what we do every day, in every hospital that, that we have. And everybody else does the same thing. Rarely you keep the patient 50 days or 60 days in the hospital. You know, because you know what? I'll tell you why. The longer you kept the patient in the hospital, you get hospital-based infections. You're going to have nosocomial infection because there's germs in the hospital, because their hospitals are not safe places. It's just anecdote, right? Hospitals are not safe places. I tell that to my nurses. I tell that to my doctors. Listen, you've got to get the patient out. The minute the patient is ready to go, go. Send them home or a nursing home. Don't keep them in the hospital. Hospitals are very acute. Five days, four days, that's it. After that, the patient needs to go. And that's what you need to do. In Armenia, they keep it forever. My child, he went to see Chanik. You know, they stay there forever. It's like, come on, get, get, explain to them. I explained to them. It's like looking at me. I'm like, I'm from the moon or something. You know, they have no idea. Uh, OK. This is when I met. Well, I guess we will move now from the uh, presentation to more uh, uh, this, yeah, visual things. This is when I met uh, with the Prime Minister. That's my daughter, and the Prime Minister really liked her. His so daughter is in her age or something, and give her a, a gift that we bought from the United States. That's our team that we went all together. And uh, you know, he's a smart guy. The Prime Minister is a, number one, he's honest, which is rare in that country. At least he's an honest guy. And he's smart, very smart. Whatever I told him, we met over an hour with him, hour and a half, right? Yeah, hour and a half. He took notes. Everything I said, he was writing it down. The following day, he went to Parliament, and he said exactly what I told him. I said, oh, at least he understands it. He knows there's a problem. They have an acute problem. Okay, another medical term, let me use. They have an acute problem which needs to be addressed. Addressed now in order for them to bring to any standard. Okay. This is when we met with him in the office. Okay, that's the hospital. This guy is a cardiologist from Syria. When I was visiting the hospital, uh, this is uh, Nairi. I visited every area within the hospital. Worse than I met this guy, he was speaking like me. His Armenian was different. 
So I told him, where are you from? And he said to me, Damascus. Okay. So you like us, you know, you're speaking like me, I told him. Uh, he's a smart guy. He gets, I explained to him some of the things they need to do in the hospital. He said, we're ready. I mean, the doctors are ready to do it. We just need guidance. We've never had any, anybody tell us anything. We thought this is the way it is. So I think there's some hope. A lot of the young generation, people coming from outside, and the other nurse that, oh, thank you. The other nurse that from the United States went there when I met with her, and I talked to her, and she was at UCLA. She said, there's a couple of nurses like that. They understand that that needs to change the system that we have. Because really, it's, it's sad. I mean, healthcare is a basic need of people. And that's pretty much uh, lacking. OK, this hospital was, was really impressed me because it was a nice structure, modern building, had all the equipment. They, they buy the equipment from Germany, from Siemens. Most of the MRIs, they have an MRI. The latest MRI from Siemens, they got it. They have uh, x-rays, they have a nice CT scan. Surgery is pretty good. They have uh, nine surgical rooms. I visited every one of them. I checked. I talked to the doctors there, and, and they had a really good structure. I guess one of the oligarchs built this thing, and we spent a lot of money. And it's a private. You have to pay for it. And it's not free. So there is no freebie. Uh, but that's the, uh, the hospital CEO. I think it was the CEO, or Donorender, whatever it is. He's in charge. That's the other uh, doctor So uh, in the hospital. And we went to every area. Whenever I visited these 10 hospitals, I visited, like I'm visiting one of my hospitals. I went everywhere. I want to see it. Because I don't want them to tell me some story. Because my job is to check. I mean, that's what I do too, I check. To make sure that the hospitals, whatever they have, whatever they say they have, it's there. Uh, so they're pretty modern, as you see. The floors are clean, it's not dirty. Their equipment, not bad. Uh, pretty much they have what they need in order to take care of the patient. One thing I notice, they don't have the concept of single beds. They're putting two patients together, which is kind of creates a problem for uh, cross-infection. Let's say he's sick with pneumonia, I'm sick with something else. My infection goes to his cross-contamination, we call it. Yeah. Same thing. We don't, they don't have that concept yet. So they're trying to understand it. And I explained that to them. He said, try to put each patient to a single bed. That cuts down on, on infection. infection. Get rid of that infection that you're going to have. Uh, okay, that's the, the mayor of Yerevan. Uh, see, this is, is Miriam, which is a, this is Behapar. And Vihapan and I, we had some very good discussions. Uh, that's the chief of the hospital. He's a orthopedic surgeon. Good guy. He understands it. He gets it. I like the hospital. And Vihapar, I don't know your opinion about him. I liked him. He's a good administrator. Very, very tough guy. Uh, when you walk, he sees anything on the floor. He tells him, clean this. He goes there. He's, he's a good administrator. He's a good manager, so to speak, right? He's, I think I'll hire this guy to be one of hospital CEOs. He's, he's very good. He's very picky. He's very careful about everything in the hospital. And, and his hospital is good. His Miriam is top notch. He has all the equipment he needs. He gets a lot of money from Manubia, he's told me. She, she, she spent millions. And I, I told her, and Surpaz and I said, I mean, Vehapar, I said, you don't need any help from me. I mean, you have everything. So why are you asking me anything? Oh, Mike, I need this, I need that. He's still asking equipment or, or supplies. I told him, you have everything. I visit every place that I, I see. So you don't need anything. So as I said, these four hospitals have everything they need. Their standards are much better than anybody else. I think that was uh, his Miriam again visited there. I talked to the doctors, yeah, yeah that they're CT, that they're from Siemens, as you see. So, they, I mean, they bought everything given by American uh, philanthropic donors from the United States. They're giving these billions, and, and is Miriam is well equipped, has everything. Uh, 
This is the health minister, Arsen Torosian, and he's, he gets it, he understands it. He wants to change. Imagine, it's a, it's a mindset. I mean, I don't blame them, because these are what they're seeing <coughs> the last 30 years. All of a sudden, they're changing now. This revolution really helped Armenia, not only in, in terms of the government and so forth, but at least the mindset of the old regime, things doing the old ways, hopefully be the end of it. That's something we got from Torres Young. This is the diaspora minister, you know, he's, he's a member of parliament, but he's no longer there. This is in Artsakh. Uh, and I was really impressed by Artsakh. Uh, they have a nice hospital there was given the money by a Russian Armenian, it's about like 20 million or so. It's a very modern building, nice equipment. Yeah, it's coming. Oh, this is the president of Arts of Here's the hospital. And uh, yeah, they have war plans and everything, which is good. One thing I, I, I noticed and they told me, whatever they have up, you know, above the pool ground, they have it underneath the ground because of the war. If war happens, at least they can bring the wounded and treat them underneath the bunkers. And they have a complete setup. They set up a surgery, they set up a treatment area, ICU, a complete medical surgical floor. Whatever you see in these three floors, they're underneath it, they have it, which is great. Huh? Tunnels. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Uh, in Estepanagui. Yeah. Oh, well, brand new. Oh, uh, this is in, this is back in Yerevan, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This, this is the metal. This is the one that's... The worst one. <laughs> I think it's, this was horrible. This is just... This one also, you see the old buildings, all from the Soviet times. They're all very, very antiquated buildings. Uh, yeah, people smoking everywhere in the hospital, just like nothing, nothing like us. I mean, if you work in an American hospital, to us, we spent 30 years in American hospitals. We go there, I was like, whoa, what's going on here? So I think, especially the older one. I mean, even within Yerevan, that's what I'm trying to make the distinction. They have these four hospitals that are modern. Uh, they have all the equipment, the basic things, and they're trying to get to some standard. Whereas you go to these hospitals, they're completely bad and backward. Uh, this is Medical Center. This is the one, Masiv, yeah, not Masiv, that's what they call it. That's the hospital CEO, is it? Yeah, he was gonna, yeah. This guy, I don't know what specialty was. Do uh, you remember? It was, I think, a big surgeon. He was gonna be a big surgeon, that's what he told me. He was gonna go to Germany, he was gave up his, see the thing, they didn't have hope in the country. When you lose the hope, people leave. And the, especially, well-educated, People leave Armenia in droves, and these are the brains of Armenia. We need to keep them there. I mean, you can't let these people leave the country. Doctors, lawyers, engineers, business people. You, the country needs them. You cannot just let everybody go or, or go somewhere else in Germany or the US. We want them to stay there and make the country better. Uh, so he's a smart guy. He's new. The guy before him was a nightmare. He stole everything, and he left. So they put this guy in charge three months before I got there. And, and he's trying to make things, but so much work needs to be done. I mean, it's, the guy is working like seven days a week, he told me. He never goes home because there's so much work to be done. And he gets it. And there's are smart people like that. I mean, the doctors are very intelligent. They understand it. They, they know. They read. I mean, internet, everything. They, they understand it. Their hands are kind of tight. They haven't done anything before. Now. They're trying to make a, a drastic changes there. Oh, this is Edinburgh University. Okay, I'll tell you a story. I, I told that to them, to the students here. Yeah, I was a young guy who was supposed to go to, and I was just, I haven't finished my high school yet. I was supposed to go to Armenia, to medical school. You know, next year. I'll apply. You apply, you go next year. So I decided not to go to the United States, one school here, and all my education be here. So I never went there. So I go there to Armenia. These guys, they're going to give me a doctorate. 
I said to them, I'm a bad student, you shouldn't give me doctor. Because I was supposed to come here four years ago, I flunked. Now I've come four years later, I'm getting my degree. So it took me four years to get the degree. So, oh, this is, the yeah, one thing breaks your heart, these wounded soldiers that they gave their life, and they don't make much, the soldiers, I mean, really, literally, peanuts. They gave their lives to the country, and they have their own hospital that we went there, and volunteer. Well, who's that? Yeah. It's helping the soldiers, the wounded soldiers, that they can't walk, they can't, I mean, I don't know about you, I was in tears seeing these soldiers, they gave their lives to the country to protect Armenia, to make Armenia safe from these Azeris, and everybody's attacking us. So these soldiers, they're brave, they're, they're heroes in my mind. I said, anything I can do to help the soldiers, and we gave them a ton of supplies, a ton of first aid. Uh, from Medline and everybody else, we provided them, and I'm going to continue doing that to help the soldiers. God forbid, I hope it, it will never happen, but happens to do that. I mean, this guy was, I talked to him, he was completely wounded, and he was, they thought they're gonna, he's going to die, and he cannot walk. He's just barely getting on that and walking. Yeah, I mean, you see the, their faces, you just completely change. Your attitude, they're smiling, these soldiers. They, 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 they finally seem hope that they're going to get better one day. That's okay, that's it. So with that, let me summarize it in, in, in a nutshell, and I'll take any questions you have. The Armenian healthcare system, in my opinion, I wouldn't say it's bad, but I would say it needs help. It needs a lot of help. Armenian healthcare system, at least started a process of modernizing itself, which is going to take some time. They need the help. It's, look, I'm not going to criticize my friends uh, from these hospitals or physicians who go there, do surgeries for a week and come back. Great. I mean, that's okay. But I think we need to make sure they have themselves be trained, get the equipment, that they can do it themselves. So if you give a poor person the food every day, it's better that the poor person get a job or to himself as opposed to constantly helping them. I mean, that's what I believe. That's my personal belief. And I told this to the minister. I told this to the prime minister. And I told everybody else. I will do everything I can to help. Look, at this stage in my career, I really don't need anything else. I'm pretty successful, right? So I don't need any, I mean, everybody needs more, but you know, I'm, pretty much at a stage that I've done what I needed to do. So if I can help them, <laughs> short of moving there, I will do it. I will help you guys, I said, giving you, we'll give all the books, <laughs> we have all the policies, procedures to you. We give them all the training stuff, we ship everything to them. Uh, books, you know, by computer, everything else. Whatever we have, I said, that prime, I open it and you can have it. Just have everything you want, but we spend millions of dollars developing these things. You can have it. Just study yourself. Establish yourself that ultimately you don't need us. You know, don't be asking handouts all the time that you be self-sufficient and you're on a stage of making the country model. Let me tell you another side story. I was buying equipment. I think we were buying x-rays, right, from Siemens. Siemens uh, President USA flew from Philadelphia and came and met me. And he said, I just came from Turkey. I said, yes. He said, we're building a billion dollar a hospital in, in Istanbul. And I said, great, wonderful. You know, wonderful news, especially me, who's not that fan of the Turks. I said, why can't you give me half a billion or quarter billion? We put one in Yerevan. Uh, all these countries, are advanced, more advanced than us. Turkey was our neighbor, and we say, oh, they're our enemies. They're getting the most advanced equipment, the most advanced hospitals, more from Germany and other countries, European countries, and from US, as a matter of fact. Turkey is trying to do medical tourism, trying to attract people because it's cheaper to do surgeries there. Why can't Armenia do the same thing and, and develop the tourism business in Armenia that people from other parts of the Soviet former Soviet countries come to Armenia and bring 
hard currency to Armenia. Something that, you know, I talk to them, they, they like it, they, but, you know, our system is so antiquated that nobody will come. Now I know why. I, mean, I wouldn't send any of my family. I'm not putting anybody down again. Uh, it's my responsibility, okay? You, nobody's going to sue you, so you can sue me. Uh, I'm immune. So, look, you cannot bring anybody there. Nobody will come. I mean, we need to develop a system, and, and the government understands this. Pashinyan knows this. Probably has other problems, the poor guy. Uh, the health minister understands this. The healthcare policy for the country needs to change in order to accommodate these needs in order to get to that level. We're not there. I said three years. I think I'll be happy if it gets there in five years, even to some basic standards after that. Uh, so I'll take any questions. I hope I encourage you. I didn't discourage you.